Hello guys, last week Taylor Otwell officially released a thing that we've been waiting for, Laravel Pulse. It is a better version at the moment, but it's already working and from what I've seen on Twitter, it's quite a huge thing. A lot of people are playing around creating their own widgets on the dashboard and everyone is pretty exciting, especially since this impressive tool is free and open source. And I will create an in-depth full review of Laravel Pulse later on this channel or maybe even a full course because it's quite a deep topic with a lot of options, we'll see about it. But I wanted to take this opportunity to review Laravel Pulse from another angle. It's open source, which means we see its code. So we can learn from that code from Taylor and his team, official Laravel team who created Laravel Pulse. So this week on this channel, I will show various parts of Laravel Pulse open source code. And together we will learn a few tricks. I learned a few tricks myself about PHP, so let's dive in together. The first lesson for today is about migrations. So there's one migration file in Laravel Pulse, which you would run during the installation. So installation instructions say compose require and then artisan migrate, and it would create a few database tables. So I want to mention two things as kind of tips here in this video. So the first tip is one migration does not necessarily mean one table. Quite often, especially in the packages, I see this structure, up method of migration, and then pulse values, pulse entries, and pulse aggregates. Three tables in one migration. It's not necessarily, I wouldn't call it best practice, but in some cases, it makes sense to group a few tables together if they are about one topic, one subject, or one thing. It's similar how you would do route group in routes file. You may group a few tables in one migration file. So that's tip number one. And then another tip, the structure of the table does not contain auto increment ID. Later this week, we'll talk about database queries from this structure, but look at that. There's no table ID. There's no auto increment. There are just fields, text, timestamp, integer, virtual. I will talk about that separately in a separate video and then a few indexes with comments. And this is a great practice, by the way, what the index is for. So you would then ask how to identify the records. So this is unique composite key from two fields, uniquely identifies specific value, type and key hash. So instead of ID for identification, we use key hash. In other tables, it's similar, but even more complicated. In post entry, there's no unique value. And in post aggregates, there is a unique value for five columns. But it's mostly not about identification. It's kind of a validation of you cannot have more than one column with these unique values. And finishing the topic of grouping a few tables in one migration, then in down method, you can drop all of them also as a group. So yeah, two quick tips, two kind of myths busted. You don't necessarily have to have one table per migration and you don't necessarily have to have ID field or auto incremented field in the database. As I said later this week, we'll talk about queries from that data and how they group the data, order the data and stuff like that. So subscribe to the channel to get more videos about Laravel pools throughout this week. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.